Hi, Yasmin here. I'm a student at the University of Ottawa and I'm a student journalist. I'm doing this little video because I want to document the, the research that I'm going to do in the following days, following weeks, uh, about journalistic objectivity and the use of the for and against uh, format. I am on my way to the library to do some research. I've been here for a couple hours and what I can see is that objectivity it's not black or white, there are so many different views on it, um, so I'll see if I can make sense of that later on. Uh, as you may know, the newspapers were always partisan, and this trend of being non-partisan, of being objective, uh, is very recent. Actually, it started in the 20th century, when readership of newspaper increased. Just to give you a sense of that increase, from 1880 to 1920, the amount of US daily newspaper readers increased by 10 times. So we went basically from 3.5 million to 33 million. The newspapers saw this as uh, a reason to become nonpartisan because that way they could appeal to a larger spectrum of uh, political opinions. Nowadays, objectivity is less about non-partisanry and more about balance, about reporting both sides to every story, but that can lead to some problems. Here I have an article from Brent Cunningham, and he says that uh, editors confessed that during the war in Iraq, even though 70% of the letters they got from the public were against the war, they tried to run as many pro-war letters as possible, not to be accused of bias. Quotes from people with differing views in an article gives the impression that all sides were heard and that the reporting is balanced. I also found this very interesting quote in a paper from Professor Gigi Durham. Uh, reporters were trained to seek out oppos opposing views on a given issue as actual evidence of objectivity in reporting. And for uh, the author, she ar argues that that way, uh, the public does not learn science, but rather that there are two views on a story and they cannot really make sense of it. And that's interesting because I found the second article uh, about how media coverage of global warming in the U.S. had a strong impact. Their goal was to try to explain the shift in the public perception on global warming. So in April 2008, 71% of Americans perceived a solid evidence for global warming. A couple months later, in October 2009, that number dropped to 57%. What the study found out is that as over 60% of Fox's broadcasts were dismissive of climate change, people tend to be more and more doubtful towards uh, climate change. So the more often people watched Fox News, the less accepting they were of global warming. So uh, I started doing a lot of research on the critiques of uh, many scholars. And what I found out is that uh, many of them uh, thought strongly that journalists should admit that they're not fully objective. And here I'm going to quote Brent Cunningham. He says, Journalists must acknowledge humbly and publicly that what we do is far more subjective and far less detached than the aura of objectivity implies. Little update, so I'm going to be speaking with Marc-François Bernier tomorrow. He's a professor at the University of Ottawa, known scholar. He wrote a code of ethics for journalists.
de journalisme littéraire et politique. So, uh, this video is coming to an end and I'd like to make a quick recap of what I learned. So first of all, in journalism, objectivity is viewed as something completely different depending on the audience, the journalist, and the broadcaster. Speaking of broadcasters, uh, they could actually choose what it means to be objective depending on the timing. So during the war in Iraq, Fox News chose to consciously abandon the principle of objectivity, arguing that reporters could not be objective during wartime. Also, I learned that journalists seek to distinguish themselves from PR agencies and other official sources, and the way they do that is by claiming to be neutral or objective. Uh, and they do that by opposing different views on a given issue. This is easier for the journalists and it protects the broadcasters from lawsuits. Also, that format can actually be damaging to the public because as both sides of an issue are presented as being equally valid, the public doesn't really know what to do with the information and ends up believing something that is empirically false. Also, according to Professor Bernier, uh, there's a new value that is emerging in the media industry and it is transparency. So more and more people are asking journalists to be transparent and to be held ac accountable for their actions. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope that you learned a little as much as I did during this video and uh, thanks for listening!